Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. Uh, so, in these, uh, in this course, we have, uh, of course, uh, covered many things, uh, mainly at a fundamental level, and uh, we have covered kinetics, uh, different um, uh, mechanisms by which reaction happens for different kind of fuel and mixtures. We have covered uh, different kinds of flames, non premix flames, flame premix flames, uh, their ignition extinction behavior. Uh, but all of those are at. Uh, laminal level. So, we really have not brought flow into the picture, but as you know that combustion a large part of combustion is also flows. Okay? It says combustion is essentially chemically reacting flows with large heat release. Okay? So, uh, as an especially in an engine flow is a the type of the flow the nature of the flow has a very important effect on the combustion behavior. The, the most important thing, uh, most, most uh, striking feature of the flow apart from the different kind of patterns etcetera that is formed is that in an engine the flow is invariably turbulent. Why? Because you see uh, uh, engines uh, operate by the principle, aero engines operate by the principle of uh, uh, like uh, thermodynamic cycles. Uh, say most important among them is the Breton cycle. Now, in the Breton cycle if you see that I mean before you extract work the heat addition process is essentially a constant pressure heat addition process which happens at high pressure. Okay. So, a combustor in an engine is invariably at much higher pressure relative to the surrounding ambient pressure. Okay. Now, that pressure can be different for different engines for example, in a gas turbine engine the pressure can be 30 40 bar in a or 30 40 atmosphere. In a in a scramjet engine, it can be of the order of 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5 atmosphere. Okay. Uh, in an afterburner, it can also be little low pressure, but the fact of the matter is that in all these cases, the engines operate at very high flow rates and they are at high pressure. And the resulting effect is that in engines, in gas turbine engine, in scramjet engine, in afterburners, in ramjet engines, all aero engines, the flow is intensely turbulent intensely turbulent. Okay. The flow is intensely turbulent. Please keep this in mind. An engine flow is intensely turbulent. So, the combustion process associated combustion process that happens is also extremely is a very strongly turbulent combustion process that happens. Okay. Now, what does turbulence do to combustion? That is a very difficult question because turbulence itself is a complex process and combustion also all itself is a complex process. So, when they meet the resulting the resulting process that emerges of turbulent combustion is actually very complex, but for that we need to understand to understand basically the flows in an engine we need to understand turbulence at a very good level we need to understand combustion at a very good level and also then after that we have to understand how turbulent combustion behaves. So, so far we have basically developed an understanding of combustion. Now, we will develop an understanding of turbulence, then we will go to turbulent combustion and at that po at that point we will be in a very good uh, situation to take up actual processes that happens in a different kind of aero engines. So, that is how the course is structured. Okay. So, we slowly build up complexity, we slowly understand laminar combustion process, we slowly understand turbulent combustion process. So, we then we understand how they interact and uh, how they and what is the resulting uh, interaction uh, that emerge and then we understand how it behaves in an actual engine. So, this is the this is the whole uh, uh, story about this course. Okay. So, um, you see that um, in, in engines in aero engines the turbulence Reynolds number which uh, we can define as essentially u prime times a u prime means a u RMS say uh, u prime RMS rather the RMS of the fluctuating component of velocity times a characteristic length, length scale uh, which is can be the, the, the diameter of the engine or divided by the kinematic viscosity that is of the order of say 50,000 in a gas turbine engine 
it is of the order of 10,000 to 5,000 in an afterburner or a scramjet engine. But this is turbulence Reynolds number, this is not just normal Reynolds number. So, invariably all flows are very, very turbulent and we need to understand turbulence as well as combustion which we have understood combustion at already at a good level. We have not talked about turbulence. So, in this class we will talk about turbulence and then we will utilize these concepts to go into turbulent combustion and different modeling approaches. Okay. So, then this we come to module 9 where we talk about combustion in turbulent flows. So, as it you see that this is organized in this manner that combustion in turbulent flows we will first go into introduction to turbulence, we will go into Reynolds averaging, we will go into uh, like turbulent kinetic energy and then we go into different pro uh, closure problems and models. And majority of this uh, material now we uh, go to a different book, we will mainly follow like Pope, Pope's, uh, Stephen Pope's book. Uh, published by Cambridge University Press, Press and we will consider also turbulent combustion, the book on turbulent combustion by Norbert Peters which is also published by Cambridge University Press. So, for this part, from this part onwards until we go to engines, we will essentially follow these books. Okay. So, uh, uh, turbulence part will mainly follow Pope's book and uh, combustion, turbulent combustion part will follow Peters's book. So, that is how it will work. Now, turbulent flows, of course, turbulent flows are ubiquitous in nature. We can find turbulent flows everywhere. Say the smoke coming out from our chimney, a large chimney is invariably turbulent. Okay. And the most important characteristics of the turbulent flow that we find is that it is strongly dependent on Reynolds number, okay. at least in the in visually. We will see what that actu actually means. So, we see that uh, if we see this turbulent flow, the structure, we see that the overall sh if we consider these two jets. Okay, at uh, essentially at two different uh, Reynolds number, uh, we see that the structure overall structure is not very different is yes the jet is uh, essentially diverging. Mm, okay, so, uh, this jet is diverging like this, this jet is diverging like this uh, and it is not very different on the overall uh, thing. But what is different is that the scale, the smallest scales of this jet are very different at different Reynolds number. So, you see that here of course, this different kind of structures are formed, but the smallest scale of this structure is uh, say of this scale, whereas the smallest scale is that it is very, very small here, we cannot even show it by this thing. Okay. So, we see that as Reynolds number increases from 2300 to 100 uh, to about 10,000, the small scales of this flow become smaller and smaller okay. and that is actually an universal property of turbulence. As you increase the Reynolds number, the smallest scales become smaller and smaller. Okay. It develops more and more fine scale structures. Okay. So, uh, this is one of the most important things. And then we talk about combustion. Okay. So, this image, this very uh, visually attractive image shows the different states of combustion. Okay. So, the first one is essentially all three are essentially expanding flames which are ignited by a pair of electrodes at a center of a of a of a of a volume which is filled up by fuel air mixture. So, you have a essentially a big uh, a, a, a volume uh, inside a inside a, a ball okay, and then you and you, then you fill up that volume with fuel air mixture and then you ignite it with a spark like something like what happens in a uh, engine. Okay. Uh, and then of course, the flame will propagate, it will consume this surrounding fuel air mixture and it will convert them into products. So, this is essentially fuel, um, uh, uh, this is essentially uh, fuel plus air mixture and this is product, okay, the inside of this flame. But, uh, so this is happens in time. So, you see that the, this, this shows the different structures of a flame that we can expect. This is what happens in a laminar flame when there is no, uh, no difference in flow. This is when there is you have this pressure is very high and the flame develops this uh, this um, intrinsic instabilities. This is called the Darius Landau instability, which we will not cover in this course. And this is when the surrounding flow is turbulence. Of course, you cannot see turbulence because you are only visualizing, visualizing this uh, flame by the Schlieridian imaging, which gives you the density gradients uh, or the second, uh, which essentially gives you the density gradients. <coughs> So, but you see that when you have turbulence, this nice symmetric shape of the flame is lost and it develops these different structures on these things. And of course, as you can think that just like the jet, if you increase the Reynolds number in this case also in this uh, turbulent premix flame, the size of the structures will become smaller and smaller. Okay. 
So, this is also a very striking part. So, here we see that how exactly turbulence disturbs the flames front to the to create this different kind of structures on the flame. So, this makes this different scales of different or different or, 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 or the structures at different scales uh, and interaction and the flame propagation at uh, depending on these different structures um, makes understanding turbulent combustion very difficult, but this is what is happening in an engine in an aero engine a flame is looks something like this it does not look like this it does not look like this it looks something like this okay so this is what is uh, happening in an engine and uh, we need to uh, we need to understand this and for that essentially we can consider at the first level we can consider that the that the turbulence disturbs the flame structure uh, but by causing perturbations at different length scales but it's more than that turbulence actually can go inside the flame structure to disturb it also but we will come to that in different times. Now, here are some examples of uh, combustion in turbulent flows. Of course, we have seen that this is what happens in an engine. Uh, this is what happens in this uh, volume. So, this is uh, you see that you see uh, this is essentially the an, uh, kind of a uh, gas turbine combustor um, where you have the swirling flow and this uh, the, the, the you see the different kind of turbulent structures coming out. And um, uh, you can have in nature also you can have turbulent combustion in form of wildfires. And in an engine, of course, you see that turbulent combustion is happening inside the combustor. So, if this is an aero gas turbine engine, and this is its intake, which is followed by the different stages of compressor compressors. Okay, and then this compressed air, this this is the track of the compressed air uh, of the compressor compressed air, and it uh, then it enters into this uh, combustor, and then it uh, um, goes into the turbine, and then it goes into the exhaust. Okay, so, the combustion has can happen here and then if you have an afterburner here it can also happen here. Okay, so, in this case there is no afterburner of course. Okay. So, uh, this is the thing, um, uh, so this is the, so the entire uh, uh, combustor might look actually uh, um, small, but the actually the thing is that this is the point where you have the highest pressure. Okay. Um, so this is the point where you have the uh, where you have the highest pressure. So of course when the when the flow is compressed, it, it occupies a very small amount of area. So that is why it or this occupies a small volume. So that is why it is um, it is uh, it is small. And uh, so these are the different examples of turbulent flows in a, in an, in different engines. Now once again going back to turbulence, of course turbulence is a complex thing. Okay, and even Heisenberg, whom you you know that is famous for this uncertainty principle, and for when asked about turbulence, he said that when I meet God, I'm going to ask him two questions: so why relativity and why turbulence? I really believe he will ans have an answer for the first, that is, he will un have an answer for relativity, but there is no answer for turbulence. So turbulence still is the most important unresolved problem in classical physics. Okay, and it still continues to be like that, but the thing is that of course, it is very beautiful, it has got its numerous uh, beauty is beauties in terms of uh, understanding mathematics, physics etcetera. You know, the, 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 the dynamics is very beautiful and complex, but uh, when you have combustion then it makes even more even more complex uh, object to look at. But uh, the thing is that this is what is happening in an engine, so uh, we need to understand it. Okay. So now, uh, as such, all mac nearly mac all macroscopic flows occurring in nature and uh, engineering devices are turbulent, and the turbulence may be simultaneously problematic and beneficial. For example, uh, you know the turbulence leads to increased drag on surfaces. Okay, it leads to loss in efficiency, but at the same time, by the same uh, reason, it also has a higher heat transfer rates. So, which enhances heat transfer. And of course, in an engine, turbulence enhances mixing in air breathing combustion engines. Okay, and of course, you want mixing is very important because uh, after you inject the fuel, if it is not injected in a premixed state already, it after you inject the fuel, you need to have a quick mixing so that combustion can happen. Okay, mm, uh, uh, so that turbulence can enhance that, and uh, it enhances mixing in air breathing engines. Okay. So, uh, how do you define uh, turbulence? Okay, turbulence is not easy to define precisely. However, it exhibits the following general characteristics. Okay. Now, what are that? First most important characteristic is fluctuations. Thus, these fluctuations make turbulent flows look irregular, chaotic and unpredictable even though turbulence is not entirely random. Okay. It is not if you see if you put if you say for example, take a velocity probe a hot weight anemometer and stick it into a turbulent jet, uh, you will get uh, signals which are fluctuating, but it is not noise okay. because noise if it is not ran, uh, random noise has zero correlation. 
okay that one point into the next point there is no correlation among them whereas in turbulence it's there is a finite amount of correlation between the velocity at one point uh, at first data point and the velocity at the second data point of course it changes okay so the correlation is not infinite it changes but at the same time it's not exactly noise okay then you have uh, non linearity okay uh, uh, flows change state drastically beyond the critical numbers uh, that is uh, uh, the you know if you consider a pipe flow the reynolds number uh, is about say um, uh, 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 beyond below the critical reynolds number the flow behaves like one after the critical reynolds number the flow behaves like another vorticity yeah vorticity is very important in turbulent flows it's very much rotational and uh, range of eddy sizes increase and the range increases with reynolds number so if you go back to the uh, to this um, uh, to this picture you see that uh, this uh, the range of eddy sizes increases with reynolds number the meaning is that the largest size eddies is of the order of say this scale okay so which is also the same here it will be of the order of this scale but here the smallest size eddies is of the order of this scale uh, which is uh, say this Mm, whereas in this one it's very very small can be of the order of even uh, can be even uh, smaller than this okay so that is that is what we were uh, we are talking about so the as, as the reynolds number increases the range of these eddy sizes the range of this uh, rotational coherent structures uh, essentially increases with uh, with with the increasing um, uh, with the increasing uh, uh, reynolds number so that is a very important and striking feature of turbulence okay dissipation that uh, the energy at small scales uh, that uh, you will see later that, that there is a continuous uh, cascade of turbulent kinetic energy uh, over different scales and ultimately it is uh, converted to thermal energy and uh, it is converted to thermal energy by the effect of viscosity oh, so the to maintain turbulence you need to have a continuous supply of energy and we'll see that how even the flow itself can provide as a supplier of this uh, turbulent energy turbulent kinetic energy and then you have diffusivity so you have rapid rates of mixing and diffusion of the species momentum and heat so some people uh, can think that uh, that you can think that there is an enhanced effect amount of diffusivity in this um, enhanced amount enhanced diffusivity in this um, um, uh, when there is turbulence okay and um, as such uh, that uh, so there are some flows that might seem random such as wind driven ocean but uh, that is uh, the surface the surface waves are not essentially turbulent it can be turbulent under certain conditions but just uh, when you see some fluctuations and random that does not mean that that is turbulence so turbulence has its own characteristics which we'll show now okay so one thing is that of course where does turbulence come from turbulence comes from the momentum equation right the, the navier stokes equation uh, the the reason is that the navier stokes equations are non linear uh, because it's you see the the convective acceleration term which is that v uh, dot divergence on v vector uh, that is uh, there is a non linearity in v so this uh, turbulence essentially stems from that term itself okay so it is that non linearity that makes turbulence non linear Okay. Now the question is that if the governing Navier-Stokes equations are deterministic, why is its solutions that is turbulent flow appear random? The reason is that uh, that uh, just like any other nonlinear systems, uh, of course turbulence is a one very uh, important nonlinear systems. The turbulent flows are actually sensitive to perturbations in the initial condition, boundary condition, and material properties, and uh, of course uh, that is what uh, uh, creates this. So, if the proper design and careful effects, uh, these perturbations can be reduced, but they cannot be eliminated. Okay, and perturbations are even present in laminar flows, but at high Reynolds number of turbulent flows, the flow field is extremely sensitive to small changes. So, one small change can result. Uh, so, you have the same initial condition. Suppose your velocity, initial velocity at the inlet is v is equal to 10 meters per second in one case, and in another case, it's a 10.2 meters per second. And this small difference of the velocity, inlet velocity, can actually cause in you know, a different kind of turbulent structures. Okay, so the statistical properties may not be very different. That is, the average properties may not be very, very different, but the instantaneous properties can be widely different. And that is very that is very natural because in a, in a, um, when the flow enters into an engine, there is you have absolutely no control whether the velocity will be say 10.1 meters per second. A particular velocity at a particular point will be 10.1 meters per second or 10.2 meters per second. So but the flow itself is turbulent. Okay. So the thing is that uh, this this uh, can be appreciated by the by if we consider this uh, Lorentz uh, system. 
uh, that is uh, that uh, this uh, the effect of turbulence being like chaotic like this is uh, because of the fact that turbulence is the governing equation is a uh, nonlinear partial differential equation. So, if you consider this uh, nonlinear equations like this um, uh, that uh, if you consider this a uh, Lorentz system that is where is given by x dot y dot and z dot whereas, this is a coupled set of systems where which itself depends on y and x etcetera. So, in this case you see that the solution for a given sigma uh, which are essentially constant beta and rho if you have this uh, this kind of set of initial conditions x 0 at time t equal to 0 you basically then solve it over time this Lorentz system you see that at uh, x with a uh, with a initial conditions of uh, x at time t equal to 0 y at time t equal to 0 z at time t equal to 0 if this is a point 0.1 point 0.1 point 0.1 okay then we get one set of solutions now if we change it to this uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seventh place of decimal of this thing okay and you get a solution which is initially it stays same as you see up to this point it stays same but then this uh, difference starts happening okay so then if you plot this difference that is this this is the x uh, t and x prime t the only difference between these two uh, the solutions is the fact that this the second one uh, the initial condition of x has a has a difference of the seventh place of decimal okay in this thing so you see that the difference builds up and this difference is of the order of the actual solution so this after some time there is no so resemblance between um, at least instantaneously there is no resemblance between these two solutions so you see that this type of coupled equations uh, uh, when you have differential system uh, equations governed by uh, differential equations so, when you have this kinds of things any small perturbation in the initial conditions can result in different solutions. So, that is why the whole purpose of turbulence is not to predict instantaneous structures or instantaneous velocities at a particular point rather we will predict uh, we are interested in predicting the statistics ok. So, uh, that is why uh, we, we, while the neither uh, the deterministic nor statistical analysis have been able to conquer details of turbulence the statistics do offer useful tools for understanding turbulence. So, the whole purpose is to understand the different statistics of turbulent flows either for turbulent non reacting flows or for turbulent combustion uh, etcetera. So, we will are we are interested in understanding the statistics of this uh, of this turbulent flows ok. Now, the most important thing we uh, will go here uh, to understand uh, about statistics is that the first uh, point to note is that uh, we will call about we will talk about Reynolds decomposition. So, um, if you have a turbulent field quantity which can be anything velocity, temperature, pressure um, etcetera, um, uh, species etcetera we can dissolve it into mean, mean its average and fluctuation. So, u is essentially equal to uh, u mean u plus uh, and a small u which is the u fluctuation. Okay. So, we will come to this what actually these are uh, these are and how to get this we will discuss this in, um, in this class ok. So, now um, if you uh, see this thing that uh, averaging of the mean uh, depends on the nature of the term and uh, we will we'll talk about averaging, but what particular averaging we are talking about depends on the particular application at hand. So, we will consider a temporal average when say u is stationary in time we will consider spatial average when u is homogeneous in space ok. But this uh, we will basically consider a generalized averaging which is ensemble average when arithmetic average over uh, which, which is essentially arithmetic average over independent realizations under identical conditions. So, essentially you perform the experiment different times and for each experiment you measure uh, some particular quantity and that essentially becomes ensemble average. So, it is not exactly temporal average or spatial average, but of course this can correspond to those things under particular situations. So, we will go into uh, Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equation and to for that uh, to develop that understanding uh, we will uh, basically uh, have to develop some statistical parameters which will uh, come useful in this course also. So, I hope that you have some basic um, introduction to statistics, but I will just you know, for the sake of completeness I will just recapitulate some of them here. So, uh, first in this uh, introduction to turbulence we will not consider density variation though the purpose of this course is to understand turbulent combustion, but just to the introduce this concepts in a simple in a simpler manner we will first uh, just do the we will consider uh, the Navier-Stokes equation or the continuity equation or other equations without considering any combustion. So, but eventually at the and uh, in the later part of these lectures we will introduce a density variation and we will consider the full uh, equations with complex uh, complexity ok. So, uh, first we will just um, start with uh, equations continuity equations and momentum equations uh, for a non reacting uh, isothermal constant density turbulent flows ok. So, that is the thing. So, essentially first we will consider non reacting flows
without density change. So, the momentum equation or the Navier Stokes equation under certain such condition becomes dou u j d dou t d capital this this is material derivative rho times density times d u j d t which is the full material derivative is essentially the partial of the shear of the stress tensor along x direction. Okay. Whereas, this tau i j is given by this is actually dou t dou i j by dou x j, whereas this tau i j is given by minus p times del i j, p is the pressure, d is the i j is the Kronecker delta function. So, I introduce the tensor notations here times mu times dou u i dou x j plus dou u j dou x i. Repeated indices means addition, for example, in this case. So, it is addition over uh, um, oh, so, sorry this is actually I. This implies So, this is the, the Navier-Stokes equation ok. Now, let us define the concept of uh, probability. <coughs> 